chapter 4, lesson 2, is now the product of two fractions. So the book offers two different methods. Me personally, I like method 2 better. And for the long run purpose, I think method 2 would be the best thing to use. But again, I'm going to show both methods and you select whatever you're most comfortable with. But the method 2, really for long run purpose, is the better method. Now, the thing that we have to remember when we multiply fractions, anything in the numerator can cancel with anything on the denominator. So this is basically the process when we reduce. Okay, so basically it cancel is just divide. Okay, so also we need to remember that if we put anything in the calculator, it will give it a final answer that is in simplified form already. So we don't need to worry about simplifying anything that's in the fraction in the calculator. Okay, so which means our problems will come from page 77. So on page 77, it says to multiply and express answers in simplest form. Okay, so in letter A, there's blanks to fill in. So here we have no choice but to follow method 1. So in method 1, we just need to put this as 8 and this as 7. Okay, then we multiply these, which means this will be 40 divided by 42. And then we need to put it in simplest form. So if we want to put it in simplest form, we need to be able to divide both the numerator and the denominator by something. And in this case, both can be divided by 2. So if I divide by 2, that's 20 over 21. So when I multiply 8 fifth by 5 sixth, my answer in reduced form will be 20 over 21. Again, that's not the best method because in the process of doing method 1, we've just made the numbers bigger. And that's not what we want to do as much as possible. We want smaller numbers. That's why the cancellation method is the better method. So since in B, there's nothing to follow, we will use method 2 for B. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, anything on the numerator can cancel with anything on the denominator. So that means this 3 and that 6, both of those have 3 that can divide both. So this would mean if I divide by 3, that would be 1. If I divide by 3, that would be 2. Okay, and therefore, when I multiply 7 times 1, that will be 7. When I multiply 2 times 4, that will be 8. Therefore, the product of 7 sixth and 3 fourth is 7 eighth. When we're canceling, we have to remember anything in the numerator can cancel with anything in the denominator. But the numerators can't cancel with each other and the denominators cannot cancel with each other as well. That concludes chapter 4, lesson 2. I'll see you in the next lesson.